Jordan subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan subjective. Jordan subjective perspective. All right, here we go. We're rolling. Okay. We're good to go. You're, are you panting? Am I what? Are you panting? A little. Okay. A little, on, a little bit nervous. Yeah. Well, if it soothes your uh, your emotions, your feelings of nervousness, then let it be known that we have cute drinks. Cute drinks. These are cute cute cups, right? Why are they cute? I don't, know, don't girls like buy drinks for the cuteness of the cup sometimes. Yeah, I guess. I guess that's a thing. Like, like, do you feel... Starbucks, you, like yeah. coffees. It's not necessarily the, the cuteness of the cup. It's the cuteness of the drink inside. So, a nice, like, swirly coffee with some, like, cream and stuff. With, with like, a clear cup? Yeah, yeah. They just, okay. like... They, or, like, the pink drink. Have you ever heard of the pink drink from Starbucks? No. It's, like, um, a strawberry... Acai, I can't say that right. Acai, acai, whatever. As, as, I, E. <laughs> yeah, A, C, A, I. Yeah. A, C, A, I. Yeah, it's one Akai. of those. Akai. Akai. No, it's Acai. It's Acai. Acai. It's Acai. 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 That Akai. sounds Arabic. I don't know. Great try. Okay. Anyway, so there's like Thanks. those, and they're like refreshers mixed with like coconut milk or something. And in theory, that sounds pretty disgusting, and I'm sure it actually is. But people like to take cute pics with them, so you know why not go get a huge one and spend like seven dollars and then take your one picture. See, yeah. See, I don't, I don't buy any drinks for the flavor. I buy them by the cuteness of the cup and the cuteness of the look. You mean the cuteness the of the contents the, of the cup? Yes, the cuteness of the appeal. It's about oh, the absolutely. aesthetic. And you just like take pics, post them. Perfect. You're following. You're following how I think. That's like just so so important to know about you. I feel like you stepped in my mind for a second there. Yeah, that's like a, that's a strong personality trait. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the big five personality model. Yeah. If you're familiar, okay. So like that's the sixth one. <laughs> yeah. Like I have like a sixth sense, but yeah. a sixth personality trait, and that's what it is. That is just beautiful. Is that I, I live to please others. With cute drinks. With cute drinks. That's it. Specifically, That's it. you love to entertain, but it's mostly with cute drinks. Like you, you will, I, you know the, you know everybody has that friend in the group that's like the water bottle guy. You mean me? Yeah, that you're the water bottle gal. Like water bottle like gal. Bring one around everywhere. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like you're yes, always rocking, yeah, always sporting the fucking water bottle. Yeah, yeah. Mine is my pink one with the broken lid that just leaks everywhere. You know, I could get a new lid, but I just. You just I'm don't. not gonna spend the five dollars. Because it's your appeal. It's your aesthetic. Yeah, because I just love. Spilling water on everyone. That's the vibe. Yeah. That's the vibe yeah. you go for. See, like the vibe I go for is cute drinks. Yeah, I go that for taste like ass. Water bottle. Like they taste. <laughs> I hate them. But it's about building character. Yeah, you're it's like about the more I can drink this cute drink, the better of a person I will be. Absolutely. I think it's a direct correlation. I would say so. Yeah. Like whenever I'm sucking down that cactus juice <laughs> from Ethiopia that tastes it, like asshole and a half. Does it still have the like the sp- the spikes in it? Or the, whatever they're called? No, it's just, it's just cacti, cactus, cacti juice. Oh, okay, so it's not like... It's, it's not like the juices just shoved together. Like, de- they're de-prickled, <laughs> and then young Asian orphans are just, like, squeeze them into a cup, and then... That's a weirdly specific. Yeah, yeah. but that's, that's what I go for. Oh, perfect. Because it's about training your character. It's about, well, it's about training your taste buds. So that you can force that down your mother freaking mouth hole. And then from there, that builds character. I think so, absolutely. It's resilience. It's pain. Yeah. All the time. Absolutely. I'm a better man. It's, it's constant pain, but simultaneously that appeal, that cute appeal that I, I strive yeah. for. Yeah. And honestly, I hate to toot my own horn here, but I, I hit it pretty much on the fucking head every single time. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I have no doubt about that in any way. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this is this is one of the cute drinks I'm rocking. It's called H two O. It's called H two O. No ice, just H two O. No water. ice. H two I H two O without the cold H two O. The frozen H two O. Yeah. Okay. That's so what it's just like it's just like the one state of water. What? It? The the liquefied. Yeah. No solids in here. No solids. Yeah. That's Keep that rare. solid shit out of here. It's pretty rare. Just regular H two O. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's probably it's pretty expensive. What was that like a? Eleven dollar drink. Oh, uh, you know, sometimes I put like some like mio in it to make it look like I'm drinking the cacti juice, but and then that that ups the value of the drink, which ups my status in the dominance hierarchy. So 
that's that's pretty much where I'm going for it when I get these drinks, right? I'm going for character one and two it's two resilience, three cuteness, four social status. And they it it's pretty much like almost like a, a web and social status is at the very top and the other three are like branched off of it. You were a sta- you were just doing so much. Yeah. So much with that one thing. I'm I'm impressed. I, I never knew you could do so much with just a drink. You know? That's also why I wear a watch. Yeah. If you could see in the camera. I'm wearing a watch, not because I know how to read time on one oh, of these these not. things. Well, it's not even a digital one. Why, how can I possibly read this? It doesn't even work. I'm sure it doesn't work at all. Oh, it is. It's ticking. Wow. I mean, I had to look down to make sure it worked. <laughs> but look. Look at it. It's ticking. Impressive. Thank you. I, wear, I like um, to think so. I wear a pretty, pretty cute scrunchie every day, you know. Show that social status of being like a girly pop, you know. Wow. You know, yeah. Your aesthetic is like, it radiates with positivity. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that are you being sarcastic right now? No. Was that condescending? Did that come off condescending? No, I just. Didn't or passive aggressive? No, it was just a really nice compliment. All of a sudden. You're blushing. You're blushing. You're blushing. Wow. Sorry. I, I strive to make people feel how I just made you feel. That actually made me feel really good because people give, uh, like, pretty boring compliments or just like don't put a lot of thought into them. But for me, that was actually meaningful. So, like, right now, you're wearing a sleeveless shirt. As you and I can see, if you're listening to an audio form of this, you can't see that. Because, here's the surprise, if you, no joke, if you're listening to an audio, you can't see the video. Yeah. Really? Wow. But, okay, so, like, a, a half-assed compliment would maybe be like, hey, your arms don't look flabby. <laughs> would that? Is that true? Like, I don't know. No, no, I, I, I'm just saying, I'm like, I'm yeah. using an example. Yeah, I'd be like, hey. Because like, you obviously look fucking shredded. Like, you know that, right? Yeah. You don't need me to say that, so. Yeah. Okay. yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, saying something that's not about someone's appearance or not something you would say just, like, on a daily, honestly, is, like, just way better than anything else. Wait, you're, you're saying, so a good compliment is not about appearance? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Do all girls think that? Well, okay, girls, of course, like, they want to be told that they're pretty and whatever, but at the same time, like, for me at least, I don't know if all girls are like this because maybe they're just really into their looks, but I, like, your looks is just, like, something you're given. You can't really do anything about it. So you compliment me, complimenting on me on my looks, it's just like, okay, yeah, I was just, like, born this way. Like, if you think I'm pretty, like, that's great. But actually having to, like, work for something and, like, having a good personality or, like, Radiating, pos- radiating positivity or something like that, that's something that, like, I actually want to be complimented on because I'm doing that myself. Okay. You know what I mean? And so people or girls in particular, like, they might say that they want to be complimented on their looks and, like, yeah, it makes you feel good. But for me, I'd rather it be something that I, like, work towards and I can actually take pride in. You know what I mean? I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like the concept of, like, you'd rather a guy actually like you for who you are Versus well, yeah. if they're liking you for some superficial shit. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because that'd be terrible because there's no basis of relationship there. That'd just be like, that. you know what I mean? You know what scares me is, are like the, the, the capitalist, and this is not a like a knock on capitalism. I just think this is, happens to be a result of capitalism at, from time to time, is the fucking trade-offs of the really hot model who's dating the, the millionaire. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like there's no love there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that might just be an archetype that you see in movies. Yeah. But that's like a fear of mine. Like that movie we were watching today. Basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, there's so many relationships that are just literally not based on, like, love or relationship or anything. It's I a mean, trade-off. I mean, yeah. I mean, people back in whenever, in, like, in a lot of, like, cultures today, they still just, like, okay, you guys are going to make – or you guys would be a good family, okay, you guys got to get married. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. people never actually started, like, marrying for love, I feel, until, like, recently, like, in this modern era. And so I feel like a lot of relationships like that, that's just kind of, I don't know, a product of that. See, I I disagree. I feel like people are always marrying for love, but I feel like people are always marrying for the wrong reasons, too. But I feel like it's more prevalent now than ever to marry for the wrong reasons. Well, yeah. I mean, what the fuck do I know, but I'm guessing. People just literally want money. Like, it's ridiculous. Like... People just think, okay, if I'm rich, I will be happy. Whatever, we'll just figure out that other, you know, 
me being a good person or me actually liking the people I'm around. We'll figure that out later. But if I can be rich, heck yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Though there's this story, a quick story for you. There's So there's this bar downtown Springfield that's about to open up. I actually have a friend who knows the owner. Long story short, the owner inherited some money from his mother who killed herself a year ago. So this summer 2018 killed herself. He inherited like a million dollars. And apparently this dude had like all these different people starting to hit him up because just because he had some fucking money. Absolutely. And like that would that I just felt for that man. Like I felt for him so much because I I met him briefly. I didn't really like talk to him much. Well, he, he ended up with that being said, he ended up buying this bar out and I got to go to like an after party and he like supplied all the alcohol and everything. It was literally like hanging out at a bar after hours and we could stay there as long as we wanted. Yeah. It was dope. It, it was, was like, really it was a really cool bar. Yeah. But uh, I just I just empathize with that guy's situation so much because that's such a fear of mine is yeah. like people don't like me for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is like that's a genuine fear. And uh, I always empathize with like celebrities as well as that's exactly just what I thinking through their situation. Like, how could you find love if you're like Taylor Swift? Like, that would be <laughs> difficult. Like, everybody well, bashes on her. Now. She so, does. I'm two years. Wow. And Still nobody, that guy is, nobody but... knows what he looks like. And that's probably why it fucking yeah. worked. All yeah. her other 13 previous probably didn't work for that exact reason. Well, let me tell you, my favorite Disney Channel movie, Starstruck. Have you ever seen it? No. Amazing. That's like, it's a very silly movie, but it, like the guy is like famous in it. He's like a teen pop star or whatever. And like the girl he meets is like, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't care that you're famous, blah, blah, blah. And then they fall in love because she's like the only person who's ever treated him like a normal person. And that's like a really stupid example of that because it's a Disney Channel movie. Love it, by the way. But that's like i feel like that's like the dream of all like famous people is to like find someone who doesn't care that they're famous and just actually likes them as a person because i if i mean i'm never going to be famous i don't know what i would be famous for but if i was that would be my number one fear i feel like i would be actually paranoid that people are only around me for my fame and fortune and that thought alone could drive you crazy yes for years. i think so for fucking years it's, who do you trust like even like i mean your family maybe but like even like maybe members of your family that like what you weren't very close with or whatever like standard or something like that like they might even just like creep into your life and be like oh yeah what about me you know what i mean like and you have your guard up with everybody yeah absolutely like even the ones you trusted originally yeah. like you would start developing trust issues with them yeah there'd be a very few amount of people i already have trust issues as it is <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like I, I really i struggle with trust i think i think a lot of people do yeah absolutely and to have like to have your value in society be so high that people are only going to want you for that. Yeah. Oh, that's a scary thought. I think that, like, fame, like, movie stars and, like, musicians, I think that's just a wild concept in general because it's, like, why why are we all so obsessed with these people? I know that's weird, but, or, like, if you ever, like, just really think about that, like, yeah, they act in a movie and they're good and, like, we like their character, but, like, why are we, like, so putting so much weight on their fame? That's the thing is, like, people, like, they're only famous because we put so much weight on it. And why is it that, like, movie stars and singers and stuff like that, like, they're the ones that are famous. Like, there's other people doing amazing things, but we just put it on these, like, entertainers, and that's, like, weirdly the one thing we don't need in society, but we also hold it to the highest standard and pay them the most. Like, that's just so wild. You know what I mean? So, as your question, go back to, like, why do we value entertainment as a whole? I mean, I guess. I know – I think I think people really value entertainment as a whole because they want a distraction from – their everyday life and they want to be able to i don't know i just think people like need someone to idolize almost like i don't know it's just weird like we we're the ones putting the weight on them and making them out to be who they are like for like meet and greets or like things like that you know with like actors or musicians or something it's like yeah okay you meet them and you like greet them and you talk to them for five seconds and you're like yes i met them but like what did that really do for you you know what i mean yeah, like, right? you yeah. just met like another person who just so happened to be like talented and then became famous and a lot of people would probably if they're waiting for that meet and greet line maybe it's the delayed gratification element but yeah. they're they would probably put down and if you met like john lennon back in the day and you waited four hours in line to go meet yeah. him for 45 seconds i mean if that then there's a high probability that that is one of the highlights of your entire yeah. life. Yeah. And you know what? He forgot you as soon as you walked yeah. away, man. I, like, I've, like, um, when I was younger, I, so one of the characters off of Glee, 
um, he became an author. And so we went to like his book signing or whatever. And like I met him and he was really cool and stuff. And I was like, this is really cool at the time. But then when I think back, I'm like, okay, I just like met him though. And like, that's it. And I don't even really remember it. And he probably does not remember it at all. There's and no so way. it was just like, it was just like, there's no like relationship forming there. There's no like actual conversation. It's just like, hey, okay, like sign your book. I will say I, I was never really into celebrities until I found this long form of medium like podcasting and yeah. the people that bring an incremental like like very um, tangible amount of value to my life those people I think would be of like a highlight of my yeah. life to meet because I've never really looked up to a lot of celebrities because yeah. like I was saying earlier like I never really I never really looked up to rappers I never really Don't. there are very few athletes that I look up to yeah. I mean I, I look up to them and their work ethic their drive and things like that yeah. But for the most part, I don't really look up to them. But like, like these, these intellectuals yeah. online that have like clearly brought these, these ideas to yeah. me, and they've, they, I mean, they have provided like a crazy amount of value to my life. There, I, I don't know. I, I find a lot of value in, yeah, and putting them up on a pedestal to some degree. No, I think that's awesome. I okay, I agree with that completely, and I think that if I were to want to meet someone like famous if you will it'd be someone who has who is like has a great mind or someone who's done something really awesome for society or something like that or like you know how people always ask the question like if you could meet anyone dead or alive who would it be mm -hmm. mine would probably be someone like edgar Allan poe because like that's really weird he has or that's really weird but like his mind like was so like weird and dark but also like beautiful like things like that you know what i mean like these people who kind of to me were like geniuses or like just different like scientists like you know like isaac newton or something like that that's the first guy that came to my mind well we've been yeah. we've been just talking about him over and over in physics right now and so oh, really? people like that like i think that meeting these like genius geniuses would be cool but then at the same time it's like okay maybe other people just think of celebrities like musicians or whatever as their geniuses so maybe i'm just going against everything i just said so i don't know i don't know i think there's i think there's a healthy portion of your day that should be dedicated to entertainment but the one of the coolest discoveries i've kind of come across and i think i kind of stumbled up across it for whatever reason is that you can entertain yourself in a way that's going to be beneficial for you as well yeah whether it be like feeding your curiosity or Whatever, like it has, it has more long term benefits yeah. and tangible benefits than watching an at, like yeah. watching a sports game. Yeah, it's weird though because I feel like in entertainment there's there's two things that you're doing. You're either just watching it for like n mind numbing, just nothing. Like sometimes I'm like I am so exhausted, I'm done with thinking. I had so many classes, I just wrote a paper and then finished a bunch of problems. I just need to stop thinking and I'll Let's just like, turn on friends. Yeah. I'll just turn on something that's literally just like mind numbing might make me laugh because I love a good laugh and there's that type of entertainment. And then there is like the other type of entertainment that's like, okay, I could be reading something that's interesting, but it's also going to like expand my knowledge or just reading in general helps, you know, with your vocabulary and comprehension and things like that. So there is that other type of entertainment that's like you're being entertained, but you're also learning something or making yourself better in some way. So I feel like there are, very like they're close to intersecting but they're both very different things mm. because like i entertain myself for like two completely different reasons you know yeah absolutely absolutely i totally see that i totally see that and that's um that's something to be aware of yeah that you have the option because i think a lot of people whenever they attribute whenever whenever the word entertainment comes to mind they think oh sitting around watching music videos watching an entire season of friends watching yeah. the office um i don't know watching a sports game whatever but like to add that extra element and be like, hey, man, there might be some curiosity that you're not necessarily feeding. Yeah. And if you get in the, the habit of this repetitive following of all these different sports or I, I just think yeah. I, I keep bringing up sports because I think sports are a huge distraction. I think yeah. they're oh, I think they're great. But like, yeah, well, all the conspiracies will there where they're like. We just won that game, but did you see, you know, the planet's dying, you know, all that stuff. Like I've never heard of that. People always, like, will post, like, after a big win of, like, any sports, like, the Blues just won. People will post, like, yeah, well, while the media was feeding you all this information about the Blues, this, this, and this happened. And, like, it is true. Like, we put so much weight on, like, entertainment and stuff like that in the media that we're not seeing, like, all the bad things that are happening in the world. So, like, I do see that, that I feel like people do distract themselves with 
sports and i don't know if necessarily and it's year round yeah and it's I, year round like you can be distracted with sports yeah, all oh, year absolutely. if you follow every sport yeah and i don't know if i don't know if people are necessary like the media or like the government or like whatever these conspiracies are i don't know if people are they're necessarily like being like let's put the sports out so then we can cover all this other stuff but it it really does it distracts us from the important things and that's like insane to me there's so many things that are going on that i don't know about that you don't know about i'm sure like just going on in the world that is just awesome or terrible or whatever and we just have no idea about because we're like watching sports or we're just so caught up in like a tv show or something i don't know so you're right i doubt it i doubt it's intentionally laid out yeah oh absolutely but there is i mean when it there's literally a sport on in in just the united states like baseball goes off summer and then around like what like may june like early june uh hockey and basketball both finish up yeah and then NFL f- f- like goes from most of the winter. Yeah. Like there's there's a sport. Yeah. yeah, there's a sport literally all year round yeah, oh, if you want to follow it. Yeah. Wow. I I that definitely is not arbitrary. I would argue that like that's not that's intentional that they're because they I mean it's probably intentional because they wanted to claim as much of the media attention oh, as yeah. they possibly could because if they're competing if NFL is going to be on the same time as MLB then they're competing and if they yeah. can if they can own one season then so be it so that makes sense but from like to look at that from a conspiracy <laughs> point of view you could debate I'm not, that I'm not, all yeah, I'm not saying that that's real or anything I'm just saying that I've seen that a lot or people will just be like well why are you distracted with this this is happening well, those people are assholes. What they should do, if they're trying to get their fucking point across and talk about, like, something going on in the world, they should wait two, three days once the hype dies down. Yeah, and, and then, then just talk about it. Like, yeah, and then bring it up. Yeah. But I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But it's beyond me or you or anybody if to know if it's, like, a conspiracy oh, point yeah. of view to keep us intentionally distracted. I think it's I think it's more to keep us entertained because there's yeah. profit in that. Oh, absolutely. And also, like, Money. yeah, just different uh, – Different corporations, NFL, NBA, yeah. NHL, they're trying to claim their time. Oh, absolutely. And the commercials and the everything they sponsor and oh, a lot of money there. A lot of money there. That's why I, I pretty much only watch the World Cup, which is once every four years. And I do watch a fair amount of that whenever it comes around. But, like, for the most part, I'm, I don't know. I just kind of consciously, I'm like, why would I watch sports all yeah. the time? I just never, you know, like, I... I, when I was growing up, like, my dad always tried to get me into sports. I tried, like, almost all of them, and I was like, no, thank you. Like, I really didn't like them. So I danced and I cheered, but I was never competitive. I never really – I just did it because my friends did it, and I like to stay in shape, and it was fun. But I've never been competitive in, like, a sports af- aspect. Like, it just doesn't – it just doesn't really matter to me. Like, my physical, like, capabilities do not matter to me. But, like, if it comes to something, like – in class and we're like doing a project or something i'm like okay i need to be the best so like i'm competitive in that way but not at all with sports so it's like so hard for me to like watch people actually like really enjoy sports like it just it just baffles me i'm like how do you just keep doing this or watching it or like whatever because it just has just never interested me in any way (laughs) as long as you found that thing though yeah you know that thing that keeps you ticking yeah that you you like to chase and eat it i think it's important to find that meaningful competitive nature inside yourself so that's that's cool though that's cool well you know when i peaked in fifth grade and won a science fair project so yeah yeah look at you sitting with a genius right now (laughs) absolutely i don't even i don't even remember what i did and it was probably not hard at all because i was in fifth grade but you know that's really when the science love started i guess oh you seem you got you got an aura coming from you right now young prodigy (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah well honestly it's a I, I know we've talked about this before, but I think it's really interesting how sports bring people together in this really interesting way because their team that they identify with as a, an extension of themselves yeah. is aiming uh, going towards this common aim, this yeah. common goal of winning the yeah. championship and how it like collectively enhances or decreases the emotional state of people like like yeah. how how much like in stake yeah they are with that game and, and the collective reaction of like either love or or coping with the loss together yeah, yeah. that is really interesting because well, that, that's why people like sports yeah. it dramatizes the point of of a common aim yeah that's so true i i okay let me backpedal a little and just contradict what i say all the time but um, <laughs> 
I said I, I don't necessarily really watch sports at all except for when it comes down to like when the Blues were playing. But I thought that was really awesome just because I loved the way that the city came together. I loved that my dad was excited because he's been watching them his whole life and they're finally winning. I loved it because like my brother played hockey all his life and uh, just stuff like that. So I liked seeing other people get so excited about it. So then that made me excited mm -hmm. and I'm just feeding right into like what you're saying. But I don't know. I liked it. I just it made me really happy because everyone was so excited. And I like it for the same reasons. Yeah, I like it for the exact same reasons. It's and not that I personally give two it's not like i don't care yeah. i kind of care but it's it's very 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 trivial yeah like how much oh, i yeah. care but it's it's also i was kind of thinking back to psychology it's it's like mob mentality like that's also that's usually used in like a negative way you know like you just do what the the group does and like that's how like mobs get started just cause, like one person and then everyone keeps but it's almost like that in like a positive way like you want to be part of the group you and also again like ev like again with psychology everyone wants to be part of the end group so it's like if everyone around you is like yeah let's go blues you're gonna be like yeah <laughs> let's go blues like even if you really don't care because you just you want to be part of something you want to be part of the end group you're not going to be the one that's like whatever i don't care about sports i'm just gonna go home you know what i mean like it's it's so much more than just like the sports being played it's the people around you and just wanting to fit in just that's like always. that's really that is a beautiful point because it gives it gives the opportunity of like the misfits if they kind of take a step back they're like okay i don't care a ton but i i can get myself to care about this because it'll make me feel a little bit more included and yeah. like like the the element of like inclusion and acceptance that a lot of people have probably felt because they decided to take on the hobby of a sport yeah. is probably – it's probably like brought a lot of relationships yeah. together and probably brought a lot of confidence in people because yeah. they're like, oh, people like me now because I like the sport. Yeah. Well, and everyone always says like even if like your kids don't particularly really – aren't like great at sports or anything, like have them play a sport because it teaches them, you know, like teamwork and respecting their coaches and having – like helps them have friends and work with other people and all those things. So – just like it is like on the field like learning those things and being included is also kind of watching the game too and being like the fans. absolutely so i i don't know I, I will say i love playing sports i love playing <laughs> I them i do. just don't <laughs> love watching them yeah no i know you do and i do want to i do love watching them on occasion i'm yeah. just my my main point behind this is that it's not necessarily a productive or proactive use of time yeah. if you're doing it like in abundance. Yeah, and I think honestly, I think playing it is way more productive because you know it's physically making you better. I mean, it's it's helping you, you know, be healthy. It's making you exercise and then challenges also, yourself. Yeah, challenges you, gives you a goal, makes you like develop those skills and things. So I think that I personally think that like kids should play sports. I mean, in adults too or whatever, but I think people should play sports. I don't think it's like necessarily a bad use of your time if you're doing it in a productive fashion but if you're just literally sitting there just like watching sports all day or like following them and like that's all you do like that's not productive necessarily and that's what we're criticizing yes is the mindless use yes. of <laughs> entertainment that's what we're criticizing right there yes there's bring nothing it, wrong bring, with playing bring, sports yeah <laughs> bring it back around it's the mindless use of entertainment i mean yes. and, you know it's fine every once in a while absolutely i need that every once in a while not with sports but with other things you know i've watched the vampire diaries for three times all the way through ridiculous amount of tv but not all not all at once but i that is like when i'm like i just need something to just not think about my day or not think about my homework or whatever that's just my go-to and the, the paradoxical thing is like how how much do you think these leagues have made people fatter <laughs> like you know <laughs> like, sure. like how much pe how much weight do like people gain during football season yeah it's like every sunday they just use it as just an excuse to binge out yeah, yeah. That, that's a funny thought, too. That's true. It's like this thing that, that's meant to kind of enhance your physical capabilities is simultaneously making the rest of the world fat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'm going to take this that. shot. I've, I've had this shot sitting here the entire time. I, I need good posture. I thought that was water. No, this is, this is a shot. Oh, uh, I'm going to take – I'm going to use my cute cup. I'm going to take a sip. But you have to do it, like, really cute, okay? Okay. Okay. So no, like, no squinching. Like, I just took a bite out of a lemon. Yeah. I've, I've gotten better with shots. I, I'm going to look at the camera when I do this. Ready? And I'm going to I'm gonna stare cold-blooded at the camera. All right. And you. I'm going to look. Oh, no, then, then I could. One eye on I the camera, one eye on me. <laughs> so just stare at that? No, I just want you to be really talented. I'm not a fucking chameleon. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that was what I wanted you to be. I'm not a horse. I don't have eyes on the <laughs> side of my head, goddammit. 
whatever, whatever. 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 Was that a condescending get whatever? eyes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that weird eye twitch thing you can do. I wish the camera could pick that up. Yeah, it can't, though. That I've, genetic I've, fucking yeah. weird thing. Yeah. It's fun. I'm sure you know other people that can shake their eyes, and they just have not done it for you. I wish I could do that with, like, every part of my body. <laughs> like, I wish I could just, like, turn my That's body on vibrate like, mode. Just like a seizure. But like, do it, do it like bacon. You have, you, have you ever played that game like bacon on the like uh, on the trampoline? No. Okay. What you want to do is you you you're like oh you're, you have to lay flat with your body extended like erect. Okay. Let's use the word erect because that's a fun word. And um, so you want to lay with your body completely flat on a trampoline while your friends recklessly jump up and like down trying to break you yeah it's literally crack the egg but you're bacon yeah we I used sizzling to, bacon oh, beautiful i used to have a trampoline in my backyard and it was hor- horrible there was no like padding around the outside like at the springs and then like four of them four of the four or five of the springs were just gone so there's just this huge hole and i had woods in the back of my yard and it was a slight incline so if you just jumped wrong you would fall through the hole and like down the hill into the woods and one time now this was really great we were playing like some some game where I had my eyes closed. Not a great not a great game on a trampoline like that. And I fell through one of the holes and like I don't know, like one of the poles was there and I just like my whole leg just got like ripped up. Like my thigh. It was like totally bruised. It was bloody bloody, it was just disgusting. So trampolines are great. Yeah. Really safe for kids. Wow. Really yeah. safe. <laughs> And I was like a teenager. Because once you lose one little spring, you start losing the other oh, ones yeah. around it. Yeah, it was just gone. Like, people would fall through it. It was really unsafe. And, like, we would play crack the egg, and, like, people would get, like, nosebleeds and stuff. Like, my brother, like, jumped off the roof onto it. One time, he tried to jump off the roof with roller skates on. Onto the trampoline. No. <laughs> yes. I don't know if, it, I don't, I don't know if this what? actually successfully happened. I don't remember if this was... Uh, like and I, I don't remember if this was an idea or oh. something that actually happened, but I would not put it past my brother. I don't know. That is. Maybe it didn't happen, but I, he at least talked about it at one point. That is. Really reckless. smart. That is <laughs> wow! It's just reckless. It's like so stupid. I admire the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, what else are you gonna Your do? Your brother sounds awesome. He sounds like a, the, no sarcasm. Like he sounds oh, yeah, like a cool really cool. person. Uh, I'm gonna take a shot real quick. Okay. You've been talking about it long enough. I give my my nose is like kind of clogged. It's because I'm scared. Okay, I I'm know. sensitive and I'm scared. First shot ever. First Just shot ever. 21. Just turned twenty one. <laughs> Never drank alcohol before. It's such it, the twenty one law is such a joke here. Like everybody knows that you drink underage. Well, and it's like why is it still twenty one? What's so annoying is in like other parts of the country, it's eighteen, and we don't have you know kids going to the hospital for drinking too much you know what i mean like in other I mean, the rest of the fucking world yeah and everywhere else it's basically like okay at 16 you start having a glass of wine with your parents at dinner at 18 it's legal you can buy it and or even younger and so people learn to drink in moderation and like actually not abuse alcohol but here it's like can't do it till you're 21 so let's just go crazy and like let's just let's just whatever because we think we're we're just badasses like whatever but if it was just, like, actually a normal part of society and, like, when you were younger, I don't think people would abuse it. That's, like, one thing that's so frustrating is I feel like it's abused mostly because people – it's illegal. I think it's abused because it's legal. If it was if it was legal, then people wouldn't be wilding out so much. So we got we to gotta lower the drinking age. Yeah. That's what we got to do first. Then we got to lower the age that you can legally sleep with minors. <laughs> What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going, actually. Okay, yeah, uh, yes. there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, I, could, I could tell your, your thought process yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's another thing. I'm, I'm hopping all over the place with these random topics, but I just don't I don't get that as a guy, like looking at somebody younger and like, I want to hit that. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. That's creepy. You're not supposed to get it, though, right? In theory? No, you're not. You shouldn't. You should not be able to. Well, what do about, th- what if like a girl's really good with makeup and she's like 16? I know it's obviously not justified, but like, are you are are you still gonna blame the male? I, I'm just saying, like, if he if he has the sexual desire, he can't necessarily control that. Well, I think people can probably control their sexual desire if they. Well, act they can on. Des- they can control if they act yeah, on it. Okay, but if but, they have that but desire, also like what you think? I mean, I guess that's true because a 16 year old could look as much like a 20 year old as I look like a 16 year old. Like, I, I'll say this. I'll say this much, right? I had I had a buddy who was from the Ukraine. And he shows me these girls. And this was back when I was – I was probably about 20 years old, so three years younger than I am now. But he shows me these girls, and he's like, what do you think of her? And I'm like – Perfect. Dude, 
Honestly, she's pretty hot. Is that like a girl you're seeing back home? He says, yes, this is a girl I've been texting. And I'm like, okay. Why do you have to talk in the accent? Because I'm, okay, I'm it's him. Good, yeah. You know, it's my character play. I feel like I'm sounding more Russian than I yeah, am yeah, you are. Ukrainian. But fine. regardless, he, um, he shows me her. And, I'm, and he's like, do you think she is attractive? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I think she's she's really good looking, honestly. Good for you, man. And um, this girl, I think she was like 14 or 15. Oh, gosh. Yeah, like I felt disgusted How? with myself. If No, I, my point is, if you were to look at this girl, yeah. you would probably guess 18, 19. Yeah. Like you would have, yeah. like, I think majority of the people that would look at that photo, if they were swiping on Tinder, if they were on fucking which is another scary thing. Like, what if these girls are posing as 18 because they want the older men? Like, yeah, who? I, I don't know. True. I don't know. But uh, I never really thought about that till now. But but um, I don't know. That's just like a weird thought that girls are getting better with makeup. And the point is that those desires will emerge if they look of age. And then I personally would not act on that. I don't have desire with that because – there are, are plenty of girls over 18, but <laughs> my point is that there are guys out there that are sexually attracted to younger girls than 18 Yeah, that are probably super normal. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, like, there can be, like, I mean, there's a couple guys that I've seen that are probably, like, maybe, like, 16 or 17 that look older, look like they're my age, and I'm, like, and I'm, like, Sorry, oh, I, I mean, like, that. they're cute, but then I, like, find out that they're younger, and I'm, like, that makes me feel weird. That's, I feel the exact same way. Yeah. But but guys don't care as much as girls do. Yeah. I, like, even if I, like, see someone who's, like, 18, only two years younger than me, I'm, like, whoo, slow down. But it's also down, different because, like, guys look for girls that are younger. Yeah, that's true. And they look for that youthfulness and appearance yeah. as well. But then also it's weird because there are couples, like, my aunt and uncle are 11 years apart, but they were obviously over 18 whenever they got together, but he was also 20 when she was 9, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So like, so it's that's really creepy. You know what I mean? I mean like they got together when I think she was like, I don't know, nineteen, twenty. I don't know how old she was, but that's that's. Really but if weird. they were to meet when he was twenty, yeah. and she was nine, yeah, that would have been no, yeah, no go. Like, like you're not doing that. That's so weird. But then they like grow up, and it's like the age gap is no longer weird. And I mean, I it's obviously because there's it's a child and an adult, but it's just like so weird to think that like someone that you were with, if you're like ten years apart, were literally like a child when you were in college that's so weird to think yeah that is a weird thought that's a really weird thought yeah i don't know feel weird about that one no because i, I kind of reached i kind of reached a point and where i think i mean i've been a, to be completely honest with you i'm 23 now i've been attracted to seniors in high school and that call me gross i'm not saying everybody i'll say freshman in college whatever like i've been attracted to 18 year olds for ever since I've been like probably 16, 15, yeah. probably, probably since I was a little kid, honestly. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm still attracted to 18 year old girls. Like, in I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. I, I don't know. I mean, like, the thing is, though, but like, that's, I mean, it's obviously legal, so it's not yeah. creepy or anything, but, but also, I mean, like, an 18 year old girl is going to look the same as like a 21 year old girl. Like, I'm going to look the same n- in six months as I did two years ago like i don't look any different you might get some wrinkles <laughs> yeah you're right you're right <laughs> i don't i like i feel like i've always been like the one person that everyone says like i look extremely young like i just look very young that's just a thing and so i mean if you looked at me how old would you think i was how old would i think you are i would say 19 okay well so whatever I guess. but i mean people like people i used to work with like i was like 18 or 19 they're like aren't you like 16 oh like, wow people really thought i was younger and like like I got – there's just weird stuff that people have, like, uh, like thought me of being super young, like, super young for, like, really weird times, and it's very concerning. Like, oh, my gosh. This is just great. Wait, can I say, can I say this before? Because I, like, I feel like if I leave this conversation where it is, can you, are you going to remember that thought? Yeah. My, my main point on all this – and I just feel yeah, like – I feel like, like – I don't want to sound like a pedophile. I don't want to sound like I'm justifying pedophilia, but, like, if you were a 20-year-old dude – and you're attracted to like a 17 year old, that's technically illegal, right? But yeah. like, that's not that weird. Yeah. So, like, and, but like, it's just, is, is that legal, like that legality going to affect your decision on like if you're going to follow through with that or not? Well, I mean, I think so. A lot of times I knew some people that were freshmen in high school and then they started dating their boyfriends who are juniors in high school and then they 
got older, you know, and oh. like the girl was 17 and then the boy was 19 or whatever. And like, it was fine then, you know what I mean? And like, I, I mean, I was, whenever I was dating my ex-boyfriend, I was 19 and he was 17 for two months yeah, because yeah. I was 14 months older than him. So, I mean, like technically like that's illegal, I guess, but you don't really think about it when it's like something like that where you like actually had like a long term thing and it wasn't just like a 17 year old hitting up like a creepy 20 year old who was in college. So, like, like what do you, yeah, what do you think is creepier? Like a 20 year old who's into a 17 year old or a 28 year old who's into an 18 year old? Like what's creepier? Well, obviously a 28 year old. Oh, that's true. But okay, like that's yeah, legal. Yeah, that's that's true. legal. That's true. I don't know. That it's like creepy. it's kind of a squirrely law. It it's kind of a weird law. law. Because I wouldn't because once you're 18, you're legally allowed to date like anyone. I yeah. mean, like, or be with, you know, I mean, you can date with everyone. But anyway, so you could technically be like, yeah, I just, like, really like this 40-year-old. But, like, and girls do that. You know, like, girls will be, like, 18 or 19, and then they start to gold dig, like we were talking about earlier. You know what I mean? And so that's, like, really weird. But they're just like, well, whatever, I'm legal. I can just be with this old man, I the, guess. That's that's what it is. And that's the law really creepy. pretty much states, the law states that you cannot be a gold digger until you're 18 years That's old. That's literally it. That is the That's whole... That's all it says. All it says. <laughs> Boiled down. Yeah. Um, okay, but my story about how I looked really young was um, I was, again, with my ex-boyfriend, whatever. We were with his family at the Lincoln Museum in Springfield, Illinois. And there's like a... Ch- there's like a... Like, so there was admission to get in. And then there was admission for like... Okay. <laughs> I just had I, I had to make sure I had a straight face while I took that shot. Oh, sick. Um, so there was like a child fee or whatever, and it was like 12 and under. And then there was like adult, okay? And so they asked. They were, And so it was me, him, his parents, and then his brother, who's actually like 15 at the time, but looks like he's 20 because he's just looks old. And so not 20, probably like 18. But anyway, they asked. They were like, oh, does she's under 12, right? Like they asked, like that I would. They thought this was last year or like the year before. I was I was w- at least nineteen, and they asked. They were like, "Oh, she's like under twelve, right? Like she can get the, like kids special or whatever." They literally asked. They asked, and we everyone like everyone just started cracking up. Like I was so embarrassed. I was like, "How do you think I'm literally under twelve? Like it's one thing if you're like, oh, she's sixteen, she's seventeen, you know, like high school, but literally a middle schooler, a undeveloped middle schooler, that was how old you thought I was. I don't see that. I know. I don't see that at all. Also, I like, I had on, I remember I had my hair completely natural, which is like pretty curly. I had no makeup on and I had on like just like a dress that was just like a t-shirt dress. So it didn't like show my body at all. It was just like straight down. So, I mean, I guess they could just assume but it was really creepy so then like uh, so then my boyfriend at the time was like well now i look creepy because i look because he <laughs> he's like i look like i'm like 20 but and he's, I'm just, he's like, younger than you around. yeah he's, t- he's 14 months younger than me but he's like i look like i am walking around with a child like i can't even talk i can't like i can't hold your hand i can't touch you like that's creepy like everyone here is gonna think now that that you are a child <laughs> and i am an old man being creepy so <laughs> he's your older creepy. brother yeah yeah no literally that's what he was like yeah i'll just be your older brother now like whatever <laughs> even like the younger brother like his younger brother is at least four years maybe five years younger than me because yeah i think he's four whatever four or five years younger than me and he even i guess was older than me looking it was just really upsetting that's hilarious it just really hurt me honestly. that is funny <laughs> it was a personal blow <laughs> That's really funny, yeah. but that goes back to my point exactly. Yeah, like well, women, but, women's appearance but like is like vice versa, because I look twelve. But like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like women's appearance is it's hard. It's really ambiguous to look at a girl and like the fact that girls can manipulate their image. Oh yeah, with the power of makeup, which I don't know how. I have not. No one has taught me this. No one has given me this like this magic wand to literally just like contour your face and like make you look so different i don't know how to do that oh uh, i could just i could send you a ton of makeup tutorials okay could you just like do it like right now could you just like whip your makeup out and give me like a makeover well it's upstairs so i can't do it right now right now but i could do it like right now well, like after like, this podcast like right now to the podcast okay like okay. well we could just let's just make a separate video completely <laughs> completely but it's just like a like right. a makeup haul yes and just like a makeover that's beautiful yeah i'm like i'm kind of like the straight J. Char- james charles is yeah that his name? yeah Wow, so cultured. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Do you have a palette, like, on the market? <laughs> What's a palette? <laughs> <laughs> dinner, 
keep up with the joke. I, no. I, no, I couldn't. I don't know what a ballad is. <laughs> like, I, wait, is it, you've been duped. Is it like I, I <laughs> you are duped. It's eyeshadow. Out with you, sir. You are duped. It's it's eyeshadow. Eyeshadow. An eyeshadow palette. Okay. Yeah. Which, oh my goodness, if you want to talk about something ridiculous, eyeshadow palettes. Oh my goodness, it's just colored dust, colored dust compacted on a palette, and then you put it on your eyes, which. Well, first of all, most of the time people probably- dust like dead skin dust. No, like eyeshadow. It's like just pigmented dust that you. Do they use like dirt? No, I don't know what they use. But anyway, it is probably like three cents to manufacture one. Okay, first of all, probably so cheap to manufacture. Palettes are like fifty dollars. My naked palette that you saw, that was probably forty five dollars. Holy cow, yeah. Jenner. Yeah, and what's crazy about it is I use one color. I use one. Maybe maybe the Kids. other one. Wow. Maybe the other one. But I also don't really do makeup. I don't really know how to do like the fancy stuff. So I use the one color, and then I use like the lighter color sometimes for my lid, like up here. I don't know. That's like a thing people do. Whatever. I probably your sound lid? so stupid. Yeah, like you're. At, you, well, you put like certain color here, and then you put like lighter, and then like darker here. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so maybe so at most three, but there's like the one base color I always use. So I could have just bought the one base and been fine with that for like the rest of my life. But no, people will literally buy like. 40 color palettes that they're probably going to only use two, maybe. They pay $50 or more just basically for the name, like the James Charles palette, basically for the name. Yeah, they have, like, better pigment pigments or better colors, but it's just – it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It, I just think it's the biggest waste of money. I mean, I've bought them. Uh-huh. Like, I've bought the naked palette, but it's crazy. I don't know. That's, like, the one That's thing. That's crazy. It's the one thing that people make – Manufacturing costs is like nothing. Yeah, nothing. Oh, I'm sure. Shit. And also, it's like you're just making up new colors, and you can't make up new colors because all the colors still already exist. Uh-huh. So you're just picking the colors. You're just, you're just like, this is the colors that I want, and then you're like, okay, maybe I'll have better, better dust than you. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> maybe like they somehow know how to like make butter, better dust. Uh-huh. I I dust. I don't know why I'm calling it that, but that's literally what it is. But I don't really know how there can be such like, okay, this one's like five dollars. This one's fifty dollars. Colors are similar. The, it's still dust. I don't know how you can just really make it so much better and make people spend so much on it. Perception. Perception. Marketing the perception. It's true. It's true. You're just like, I just want the James Charles palette. Yeah. That really, it, it seems like makeup that sells a lot. It's like, I like his his appeal, what yeah. he does with makeup. Therefore, I'm going to buy the James Charles palette. Yeah. I'm going to buy the, I read Kylie Jenner made like oh. a fuck ton of money on her Kylie fucking. Kylie lip kits? Ridiculous. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. Oh I'm my screaming. girth. I'm like screaming. Oh my girth. No, oh my goodness. Yes. She makes a lot of money. Every, it's just ridiculous. The makeup industry is ridiculous. Holy tits. That's yeah. that's that blows my mind. Actually, I was thinking, do you want to call this quits and start another podcast? More content? Do you want to? It's up to you. Sure. Really? I guess. I don't care. Do you want to? Sure. That, that sounds like you, like, secretly don't want to. No, I don't but, care. I don't care. Okay. I just don't know how much longer I can keep talking. No, like, I'm, like, really enjoying this. Okay. Okay. Like, I, I enjoy the ones that I can, like, be goofy like this. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of the time, like, people come on and, like, feel, like, I don't I don't connect with people in, like, a like a, a goofy way as yeah. much. So, I was like, I'll do this because it's, like, it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, this is done. Do the lights just go out? Oh, Absolutely. It's been doing that a couple times. I don't know if you've noticed. I really this, thought this top one. Has. I really thought the power was shutting off and all, really? but everything seems to be fine. Yeah, everything's running fine. I don't know. All right, restarting. Bam.